So, good morning, everyone. Uh, great to see so many people on our virtual sound chair. I've got um, 35 at the moment, and there may even be a few last-minute entries, I'm sure. So, first of all, um, everybody's been doing really great work to keep the service going. I know a lot of people are facing new challenges every day. So, it's just to say, once again, a big thank you to everybody for their hard work. <laughs> You've got to laugh. <laughs> so um, what are these uh, sessions about? So those of you that have been to one of these sessions before will know it's all about the team being able to update you on what's been happening in the last sprint. It's also a chance for you to get involved asking questions, which you can do via the Hangouts chat. Um, and as well, we will post a link to this. We are now obviously YouTube stars. And the link will be on the Google Plus community, and you can post comments on there as well. But also, if anybody just wants to drop me a question or chat about anything, you know where I am. I'm in my living room. So, uh, this is the project ambition. The, um, the bits highlighted in orange are the key bits at the bottom there. Um, we're aiming to achieve a service which is easily understood, fair, accessible, and beneficial to all our residents. So these are a couple of quotes that when we were talking to Jennifer about the vision for the service right back at the beginning of the project that came out, in particular the one on the left has become central to everything we're doing. Everything that everybody does should be geared around preventing homelessness. So um, this is uh, our triangle that sums up how we deal with people with different levels of vulnerability. Those making up the top there are in the orange section. Those are people that we feel are don't have as many complex vulnerabilities, they should be they would be able to help themselves. So we'd be signposting them to digital tools and, and facilitating their progress that way. Those in the light blue area, they are still able to help themselves, but they need a bit more help. So we'll be giving them support, nudges, and some kinds of coaching. Those at the bottom are what we really want to spend most of our time on. These are people with multiple and complex needs that we are likely to need a much more holistic and multidisciplinary approach. So the uh, triangle translates into what is our, our tube journey for the uh, for the service. So the as you see, the people that were at the top of the triangle are on the orange line. Um, you can see there that the self service tools are in there, auto reminders. Also highlight at this point the little line, little grey branch line that's coming off to the left there which enables us to give people accurate information and advice, and that for some people may be all they need. We then come down to the other lines on the journey, so those that were in the light blue section that needed some help, but um, not a full multidisciplinary team, we would create a shared plan with them, check in and nudge, but we're using some of the tools that some of you guys have been trialing, in particular like the SMS tool. Um, and then at the bottom there, we, for those with multiple and complex needs, there's the option to create a multidisciplinary plan and work collectively but with other services across the council. Just to highlight as well there on the on the blue lines, there is the optional stop of crisis support. This enables us to give specific support to the crisis that the person may be in at the time. So uh, these are our service principles and these are central and underpinning all the work that we are doing within the project on a daily basis. Thanks, Claire. So I'll give you a little bit of an update about where we're at across the various projects. So we're coming into the end of phase three, so we only have two weeks to go. So expect today updates on all of the things, all of the tools, um, including everyone's favourite single view. We've got the information and evidence tool um, to estimate waiting times on the housing register. We've got the shared plan, which we know numbers of you have been trying out. And of course, our two new updates about the SMS check-in tool and the document upload tool. Uh, but we're gonna start this week with some bad news because it's actually been a really uh, kind of bumpy and a bit of a frustrating and difficult couple of weeks. So we'll start off with some information um, and evidence from Chris. So yeah, with information and evidence, unfortunately we weren't able to do uh, what we wanted to this sprint and we weren't able to achieve launching the waiting time tool online alongside the updated website content. So yeah, this is quite frustrating and it was something that we really wanted to get done. 
but it's going to be our main priority for the next sprint to launch those two things. In terms of the problems and the blockers we faced, um, the tool um, at various points over the last two weeks was unable to connect to universal housing. And as a result, we had to delay our accessibility assessment until this week. And what this assessment is, is a really crucial way of ensuring that the tool works for a broad range of users. Um, another blocker that we had was needing final sign off on our web page updates. And this was try quite tricky, given that we had a shorter sprint this time in the bank holiday uh, and the service was dealing with other priorities. In addition, we're having ongoing discussion discussions about differences uh, between waiting time estimates between um, the spreadsheet waiting time tool that we have and the online tool. So we need to address those differences um, over the next two weeks. Having said that, we've still made quite a lot of progress in other parts of the project. So our developer, Matt, has been working really hard to get the tool uh, website ready. And I think the main improvement that he's made over the last two weeks is including a date of birth verification step for users. So when someone uses the tool now, they'll have to type in their bidding number and their matching date of birth. And what this will do is reduce the chances of us giving a user the wrong waiting time estimates. That's really useful. Despite the delay, we are currently having our accessibility assessment today, which is, which is great. We've also handed over the tool to uh, Hackett's app management team. So that's ensuring the tool is sustainably managed going forward. And we've also produced some evaluation measures for the tools launch so that we can monitor the impact that we expect to see. In addition, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everyone who completed the card sourcing activity. Um, you'll remember that this was an activity where you were shown uh, 19 cards, where each card represented a housing options and advice webpage. And we asked you to group those cards in a way that made sense to you. And this was like a really fun piece of research for us. Um, what we thought this activity could help us to start thinking about is how can we structure our web pages so that they are easy to navigate for users, so that they contain concise information about our services and persuasively communicate our key messages. We had a great response. There were 69 in total. There was a huge variety in the different ways that cards were categorized. Um, and if you'd like to see the analysis further, you can see the link in the bottom right of this slide here. We got some really good feedback from officers who took part. One of them said that it was an interesting exercise and it made them appreciate how difficult it is to create user-friendly um, sites for a varied population. And enough, another bit of officer feedback was that someone found it difficult to guess um, the information that was held within one of those subject headings that was represented in the card. So what did we learn? First of all, organizing our current web pages is really difficult. There was little agreement amongst participants in this research about how to group cards relating to advice, how to group the cards relating to homelessness, how to group the ones around housing schemes. And so if that's difficult for us to do, I think it's also going to be difficult for um, users using the site to understand how to um, navigate between those pages. In addition, it isn't really easy to understand our web page titles. And if we don't understand them, then our customers definitely won't. There was a group where there was quite a broad bit of agreement around how to group cards underneath a heading. And that was about five or six different cards that were broadly categorized as to do with the housing register. And I think what all this shows is that we need to research further how we could group pages around needs so that we know customers um, might want to come to us for homelessness support or support with their benefits or support getting into the private rented sector. And if we could design and categorize our web pages around those needs, it could make it easier for users to navigate them. So next steps for information and evidence, we're gonna address those final blockers and launch the tool and website content online. And we're also going to discuss with the service a handover of some of the web page research that we've been conducting over the past two months. Document upload. Um, so, yeah, so we kind of had a dot drop rescue plan. Obviously, um, with the service centre being shut, residents were not able to do the usual thing of coming into the service centre and getting their documents scanned and uploaded to UH. So we were exploring the opportunity of enabling residents to securely share documents with Hackney. And that's where the doc upload tool was born. Um, so you might remember, this is kind of the tool that we showed you last week. 
But unfortunately, it didn't work in VMware. So obviously a lot of you are kind of using and working from VMware and it was really, really important that we got the link working in that system and it just wasn't opening for the officers that we'd onboard it. So what we've been doing is um, we've had Matt working really, really hard and trying to get it working and we finally have got it working on that. So um, our benefits officers that we've got onboarded, the three of them, are now able to open the link and are now, um, as we speak, testing it live um, with residents. And we've already actually been able to start collecting a backlog of ideas and designs ready to implement some quick iterations. So this is just some feedback we've got on the right hand side here. Um, so a lot of benefits officers are finding this useful um, because I think a lot of the time you might get emails from residents that might not necessarily say what they're for, what these documents are, and they're finding this a more structured way of understanding what the documents are and what they're uploading them for. Um, but we've also had some feedback around making sure that that um, doc inbox is filtered according to the officer, so they're not seeing every single document that's been uploaded. So our next steps are just to continue with some live testing, onboard a few more officers, um, and just explore how we can start implementing those new ideas. Um, so notifying officers when documents have been uploaded, filtering them, and linking it to single view. And that's it for Doc Upload. Thanks, Ash. So on to a shared plan. You'll remember that the last show and share, we'd made some um, iterated on the design and they were ready to go live, um, making it more like improving the spacing um, so it's easier to read for residents, adding a completion date and changing some of the copy. The challenge with this uh, was developer time um, was needed elsewhere. So because we're working on a program of work of all of these different five projects in parallel with a team um, spread across them all, that meant that when we needed to kind of pivot and focus on fixing the link to universal housing for information and evidence, getting it ready for the accessibility assessment and fixing VMware, we had to kind of deprioritize shared plan for the moment, which I think was a little bit um, disappointing for us as a team. Saying that, we're still learning through the ongoing testing. So some kind of findings or things that we're noticing um, is the officers using the shared plan are using it to write and share individual tasks rather than building an overall plan um, that kind of leads towards settled housing. And we think that's because our current design isn't encouraging officers to use it as an evolving plan. It's more of a kind of sharing a to-do list. We've also sensed a bit of hesitation from officers um, about sharing it with residents and we're going to do some more investigation to understand why that is. So in the next sprint we want to explore how can we make officers more confident to share that live link and what support can we give officers to create a plan that is evolving over time. Okay so on to the good news um, and some of the like brilliant things that have happened in the past couple of weeks starting with the SMS check-in tool. So you'll remember that last time um, we shared that we made some design changes to the SMS tool. Um, so it only showed your contacts on the left, but you could um, search for anyone. We did, um, we asked some officers who were using it across different teams, what they're using the SMS tool for. So we learned from officers on the placements team that it's really good to communicate information about um, a temporary accommodation placement, particularly for people who have limited access to the internet that it's also useful in housing advice to um, keep clients engaged and also follow up with appointment details. Um, and that it's been quite useful to kind of nudge and check in and remind people of viewings or follow up about information or evidence um, that you're requesting. This is really early feedback that we've got from residents and staff, they're small numbers. Um, but out of the five residents that we asked, do you think text message is a good way for Hackney Council to stay in contact? Five out of five said yes, so we'll be continuing to collect more on that. And you can see from staff that there's a, a strong, <laughs> very strong indication that SMS is a good way to communicate with residents, particularly now that we're working from home and working remotely. So over the last eight weeks, um, we've had 26 staff who've been using this and over 300 um, residents have been contacted through this, which is brilliant. And we're seeing an average of 97 messages sent a week and one in five messages are getting a reply from residents. So off the back of um, all of this really useful insight, um, we've now added every email um, across everyone in benefits and housing needs to be able to use the SMS tool. So um, we'll be sharing the link with you afterwards. This tool is yours, it's yours to use. Um, we'll share with you a little how-to guide as well, but we're all here on hand if you need any help getting set up with it or using it 
um, but it should be reasonably self-explanatory. So in the single view world, we have been doing a lot of work on setting up integration tests and refactoring our code. Um, so what does that mean? Well, integration tests mean that we're testing how the whole system works together. Uh, and by refactoring, we mean that the whole code is just structured in a more logical way. Both of these things are to help future development and avoid deploying as many bugs as possible. In addition to that, we've implemented a new feature of opening email attachments. Um, so as you can see in the slide there, it's now possible. Um, and we've started with some improvements based on high impact accessibility assessment outcomes. So clearer page titles, better error messages, clear disabled button um, are some of the things that we started working on to improve accessibility in single view. Uh, in terms of ongoing support, we handed our support to ICD. So in case of any issues or new starters need an onboarding, uh, please contact the IT help desk um, and, request, and to request any new features, um, please use the feedback link in single view or uh, contact Lynn Ashman for that. Um, and what's next for single view? Um, so continued support uh, to single view users. We also plan to conclude integrated testing, um, work on displaying Jigsaw documents, and implementing the medium outcomes of the internal accessibility assessment. Thanks, Kat. For those of you who can stay in the line, we've got a bit of an activity here uh, to understand some of the assumptions that we might be making around self-service tools. Um, we'll also share this with you afterwards so you can continue con to contribute. And as always, please stay involved on the Google Plus community. Thanks a lot.